I wonder where, after all your work and all your research, you would put this in terms of, was it human error? Was it malpractice? Was it systemic failure? Was it a kind of financial greed? I think the financial aspect is interesting because it did bring in lots of money for the trust and especially when they brought on the adult services as well and they created this sort of um you know gender division if you like um and lots of people mentioned it but not in you know all of it's slightly more nuanced than than we want certainty and i don't think certainty exists i think the financial contribution that that jids um made to the trust um it was probably at the back of people's minds. It wasn't a conscious thing, but it allowed, I think David Bell used the phrase, it allowed them to be blinkered mm. because it was a huge proportion. And the, the trust has been in a weak position financially for, for years, I'm told. So the feeling was from many people, both inside JIDS and in the wider trust, that it had to have influenced the the way the trust reacted to those concerns the like that it seemingly couldn't or wouldn't tackle them properly that that the response seemed to be we'll tinker at the edges and actually maybe it's it's these people have got a problem they either can't hack the work it's too complicated or they're being motivated by something else um because to have really taken on board what those clinicians were saying which they were so worried to really have tackled that would have required massive massive change and they didn't do that can you imagine a better form of tavistock at some point existing yes so it could work it could but it's going to take work. time um you know with the best will in the world even if those new services were up and running tomorrow it's going to take a hell of a lot of time to get through eight thousand young people the news agents this is a global player original podcast